What's up guys? I'm Ehouse. I'm Andre. And today we have another episode of Speed Sim for you and it's a bit of a uh, kind of, I'm not going to say it's like a tactical tip because it's really not. Uh, what it is is kind of, <laughs> what it is is uh, it, it's a discussion on how we set up, you know, a rifle or a carbine for how we play on the field. Would you say that's yeah. a fair summary of what we're going to go over Pretty today? Much. Yeah, so... Uh, one of the first things I want to mention is the genesis of the idea for this video was, I said, oh, you know, we get questions all the time of people asking, uh, how do you use your optic or your iron sights while you have a face mask on? To kind of, uh, kind of sub-respond here for a second, we also get a lot of questions asking, well, do you, do your, uh, uh, do your red dots, are they even on when you're playing or is it just for looks? Yeah. So, continue. So we figured that we would kind of respond to that question and also just kind of talk about why we do things the way we do things when setting up what I would say is like you know, your standard rifle or carbine setup. I mean, Andre runs a high cap as his primary half or more of the time, yeah. at, at like 75 to 80% of the Nowadays, time. Nowadays, yeah. Yeah, uh, but at the same time, he's also got his own setup that does his own thing. So yeah. we're going to discuss that. Um, so I figured... Kind of your bread and butter gun for airsoft these days. It's the M4. This is my Crytac. It's, everyone owns a Crytac. Well, not a Crytac. Everyone owns an M4. Uh, so, the way I have this M4 set up is pretty simple, and it's really nothing crazy. I mean, it looks a bit different than some other M4s, but we really break it down. An M4 is an M4 is an M4 to a certain degree, and this is really no different. I've got just standard SOT mod stock. I've got... Uh, foregrip, and I've got pistol grip, mock suppressor, whatever. Uh, but the way I have certain things set up is what I want to get into, just things that actually affect how the gun handles. Uh, now, for one, mock suppressors. I'll be the first person to admit they're stupid. Uh, mock suppressor. I, I'm, I'm just being honest. <laughs> I'm right mock there suppressors are stupid. Yeah, I like them anyway because I think they look cool, and I'm used to handling longer rifles enough that they don't bother me. Uh, but if you're looking for, like, the raw best handling airsoft gun, ditch the mock suppressor. Uh, again, if you're like me and you're just like, ah, oh, well, airsoft is kind of where I get to play with toys I can't own in New York, then uh, mock suppressor, go for it. If you just want to go for the looks, that's up to you. That's a decision you get to make because that's airsoft. Uh, but if you, I'm looking for like the best raw handling, I'll ditch the mock suppressor. That's why this thing's QD, so I can take it off if I really want to. Uh, so other than that, uh, I also have the foregrip on here set far enough forward that I'm not straight arming the gun when I have it out because my preferred grip is I like to have a slight bend of my elbow and my elbow a bit down when I'm holding the rifle. So I don't do like the full on C clamp straight elbow. I don't find that comfortable for long periods of time and I definitely don't do the flared up elbow. <laughs> that I find really uncomfortable. Pretty bad. Uh, so I don't personally do that. That's why I have my foregrip set up where it's a vertical grip that is set just far enough back for me to keep some cant to my elbow when I'm in my standard shooting stance. I find that the most comfortable. Uh, your mileage may vary. There's a million different ways to do it. I'm just talking about why I have it the way I have it. Uh, and then lights. A lot of people ask if you need a light on your rifle. Uh, nine times out of ten, the answer is probably no at your average local game. Uh, at an indoor CQB facility, if you play there a lot, may very well be necessary. If it's really dark. Yeah. At a large Milsim op, probably going to want one. Yeah. Uh, so if you go to an American Milsim game, uh, Lion Claws, Centurion, Milsim West, have a light. Uh, if you're at your average open play, like here at River City Airsoft, is it necessary? No. Uh, but you're going to want one at a Milsim op. And I'm lazy, and I never take the stupid thing off. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, how I have it set up is I have it on my offhand. Uh, so it's mounted on my offhand side, so where my hand is usually not holding the rifle. But I also have it mounted far forward enough that when I switch shooting hands, it still rests just where my hand can get around it with my grip. And then I have the pressure switch for the light mounted on the 12 o'clock position of the rail. And the reason for that is because no matter which hand I'm shooting with, I can always activate that light. So it's ambidextrous. And again, in a CQB environment, you're going to be doing a lot of bilateral shooting. So having an ambidextrous activation light 
very handy. Mm -hmm. uh, I also get some people asking about lasers. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of lasers, personally. They're, they're kind of like one of those things like you put on there, like, like uh, prime example, Bob the X-Men has three of them just because he likes the, uh, the Predator kind of thing, but mm -hmm. that's purely for him for looks. So I guess it depends on how you want to look at it. If you want to put a laser on there because you like lasers, Throw one on there, but if it's gonna, if you're gonna think you're gonna be hip shotting around corners, you got another thing coming. It's not happening. Yeah, lasers are tough because <laughs> you end up chasing the dot in many cases, oh, yeah. especially out at distance. Uh, now, are they useless, and should you feel bad if you use one? No, but I would say that for me, the speed with which I can acquire a red dot sight versus the speed with which I can acquire and find a laser out on a target is a lot faster for me on the red dot because the red dot. I know where that is, I'm able to get a cheek reference on it and able to get on that optic really quickly, whereas a laser you're kind of at the mercy of where you're pointing your rifle anyway. At that point you might as well be point shooting at most of the distances you would be using a laser, or if you're well practiced with your rifle, you're probably going to be able to stay up on your optic or get up on your optic quick enough to mitigate the difference. Lasers I find are honestly more useful on pistols, but that could be a separate yeah. video. And yeah. it depends on the pistol, depends on how you shoot it. Uh, but for rifles... And if it's centered. Like, you've actually lined it up. It's... Yeah, you, and you also have to take your time to actually zero your laser. <laughs> There's way too many people I see not zero their laser. And they say, oh, that guy's not calling his hits. I'm like, yeah, because your laser's here and your BBs are hitting here. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a double-edged sword. And they do give your position away. Because oh, yeah. when you see a laser going, you suddenly know where that person is. Yeah. Uh, it's a very double-edged sword. So I'm not a big fan of lasers. But again, that's going to depend on how you practice with your rifle. Just for me, I use a red dot because a red dot is generally the most versatile optic for airsoft, in yeah. my opinion. I don't think you'll find too many people who argue with that. Uh, it's You can do a lot of stuff with airsoft, and at the ranges most airsoft games are played, under 200 feet, <laughs> a red dot is going to be absolutely one of your fastest and easiest to acquire options. Uh, I run my red dot, and this is something that Andre can also yeah. attest to, I run my red dot on a riser. Oh yeah. And the reason for that, so I run my red dot on a riser because when I'm wearing a dye mask or some face protection, I can still get down on it, crush my face into the stock, and I still have that red dot in my field of view. And on a lower one-third co-witness riser, especially on a primary arms or Bushnell type micro sight or micro red dot, uh, you still are able to use your iron sights through the lower one-third portion of the red dot sight, but uh, it doesn't, it's not too high. You don't have a chin weld when you're using it without a face mask on. And for the last thing I would say that majorly affects the function of the rifle, uh, slings. So I did an entire video. I've done two videos basically about the VTAC sling. Oh, your glorious uh, VTAC Glorious VTAC sling. Every sling. single day. Now, you sling... see one VTAC sling and it's all over. You're going to hear about it for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I use a two-point sling, uh, specifically a quick adjust two-point sling like this VTAC sling because I find that this is the most uh, comfortable and versatile sling for me. Now, with a two-point sling, it's not dangling down low in front of me between my legs like it would be with a one-point sling. Because then you start running with a one-point sling and that thing's dangling in front of you. It's hitting you all kinds of places. You don't want to be hit. <laughs> uh, so for CQB, a lot of guys like a one-point sling because they're like, oh, well, with a one-point sling, I could switch shoulders really quick. And that is perfectly valid. And I would actually agree with that to a certain degree, that you do get a lot of movement flexibility with a one-point sling. Uh, that's their big advantage. That's why they exist. Uh, but for me, and the way I practice with my rifle and my preference, because when I drop my rifle down to use my secondary or to have my hands free, I would rather this rifle be a little tighter retained to my body and not be flopping between my legs so that when I have my hands free, when I'm doing something at a milsim game, like searching a dead player or something like that, or when I'm, uh, you know, handling an objective or putting up a flag or just have my handgun out for whatever reason. Maybe my gun was hit and I'm playing in a field with gun hit rules. Uh, I just prefer to have that thing a little tighter to me, which is where the two-point sling shines. Now, one to two-point convertible slings, also very, very good for that. Uh, but you do, you do get a lot of flexibility with a one-point sling. A uh, three-point sling... If you use a three-point sling, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like outdated. Like, three-point slings, 
I'm going to quote Carl from Enrage TV here because I agree with him having tried to use a three-point sling at one point in the past in my airsoft career. Use that one. Yeah, if you own a three-point sling at this point, cut that thing up and throw it in the garbage. Get yourself a good two-point sling because you'll gain way more of the functionality the three-point sling never had by having a good quick-adjust two-point sling. Yeah. Um, and I just brought my AK out too just to show how even across these platforms, the... AR and the AK, a lot of what I just said holds true. The 12 o'clock mounted light with the offhand mounting, well, 12 o'clock mounted tape switch with the offhand mounted light, the foregrip, just where I can get that canted down elbow, the sling, the quick adjust two point sling, optic that I can use with my face mask on. Now, AKs have a lower stock than the AR 15. The AR 15 is a straight through design, which well, the real gun makes it very easy to shoot, but on the airsoft gun just means that you need a riser if you're trying to use it with a face mask. This, I do not have that problem with. Um, so all that still holds true with my AK, which is why I brought it out. Also because my AK looks pretty. Uh, but... You never need a reason to show off your AK. No, never do. Uh, so those are my notes on why I set up my rifle the way I do with the stuff that's, you know, functional on there. What do you have to say, Andre? Yeah. So... As what Eric just went over, I'm going to go over what my setup is. Uh, as you guys know, I have ditched most of my AG, Polish or whatever, um, having converted over to pistols. Um, but uh, a couple months ago, I felt a little... I was, unless something was missing in my inventory, I missed my M4, but I don't want to get rid of my pistols because I have tons of parts for them, and I can just easily switch things out if anything breaks. Um, not saying that AGs or Polish are more bad, it's just it for me... Well, it wasn't playing your preference. Along, it wasn't... Well, I played a lot with yeah. rifles, and after, once I, uh, what I, as time went on, what I noticed was the fact that it got a little heavy, because for long periods of time, especially because I like to go for objectives, I don't like stalemate kind of games, and what ends up happening is I'm sitting here for like this for an hour, or an hour and a half, depending on how long the game goes, and you know, the gun starts drooping down, I was like, man, I can't do this, with a pistol I can just hold it out, and then I can stick on with one hand, and I can wait for that next person to run up on the objective. So I got rid of uh, all my AGs because of that fact. I mean, yeah, Polish there's a light for, for what the stack, but as, as far as the front ends kind of go, they got a little heavy because the rail systems are, you know, they're fairly weighty in the front. So I, uh, I ditched that, and I kept running pistols, but like I said a couple months ago, I was missing the M4 kind of feel. I wanted my stock and having a, you know, a three-point kind of point on, on my uh, person. More contact. Yeah, more contact. And um, so uh, one of our good friends, Garrett, has this carbon kit he was trying to sell. And, you know, I asked him if I you know, wanted to come by. And absolutely, he was already selling it to begin with. So I picked it up. And the first thing that I grabbed was uh, an Elite, uh, not Elite Force, a Tokyo Marui single stack 9 kilometer because that's the only thing that fits in here. I get a lot of questions recently about what, uh, what you can fit in here. And it's only going to fit single stack 1911. So your Elite Force. Uh, not the tack won't fit because the rail wasn't fit in here, but the regular one, the black version, the original, will fit in here. Um, the the uh, the black ops from I think like Target or Walmart, wherever you can buy those. Yeah, but CO2. I think that's still a KWC OEM. Yeah, so. whatever, but it'll fit in here. Um, and then obviously your, your uh, TMs and your uh, KWAs will fit in here as well if you have those. But anyway, going up to the front end, uh, I used to run a lot of vertical grips. Uh, again, recently I noticed that you know I'm not a huge fan of vertical grips. I just like having my gun like this with the C clamp, and it works well for me. And like Eric, I like my elbow a little uh, canted like he does as well, just because I don't have to stretch my arm out because it does get a little fatigued after a while. Well, I find that, having that biomechanically, bend. having that little bit of a cant, yep. this is more support that I like for shooting. So yep. I think that's part of what it is. Yeah, so not to interrupt, again, sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so again, like he said, I like that as well. So I'm not, I don't have any uh, objection to what he had said to that. Uh, as far as lights go, I never play enough low light situations to justify running a flashlight. He goes to a lot of American Milson events, Milson West and stuff like that, where he needs to use uh, flashlights often. I usually just play at a regular game uh, here and there when I can, and it's always outdoor and sunny, or if I do go to an indoor field, it's not dark enough for me to purchase like a TLR or something like that. So I don't go too far into the flashlight realm because again, like I said, I don't run uh, too many games where it's low light situations. Um, I do have uh, flip up front and rear iron sights. I don't use them. 
Um, I just don't like the gun looking naked, so I keep those on there just because. Well, and God forbid, if your optic went down, or you could take the I optic could, off. They are sighted in. Um, I don't like things that if they're going to be on my gun mm -hmm. is if I ever need to use it, I have it. So if it's not sighted in, why do I even bother putting it on the gun? And like I said, uh, I do like having I like having it uh, look kind of more AR style with the front and rear flip up sight because once it's naked, it just looks funky to me. So again, I have it on my gun and it is sighted in, so they do work. Now, as far as what Eric goes to say about face mask, I get a lot of questions about my red dot and why do I have it? Don't you just point shoot? And because you play, you're a speed softer, don't you just point shoot? I'm like, no, I like my red dots and they're sighted in and they always work. Uh, throughout my entire airsoft career, I guess you can call it, I always had red dots. They're always been sighted in and I've always used them because I like being able to just point and shoot and not have to worry about uh, just trying to figure out what the BB is. Once you pull off that shot, the, the person you're shooting at is obviously uh, immediately going to know that you're, he's getting shot and he's going to run away. So having a red dot that's sighted in and you're pointed and you're going to, that BB is going to go exactly where you're pointing at. It so, eliminates the margin of error. Exactly. So now the second to uh, follow up on that question, uh, why do I have it <laughs> double rise? I get a lot of hate across the board as to why I have double riser. And the fact of the matter is I have a small face. Eric doesn't. <laughs> so he can squish his face onto the stock a little bit better than I can. And so in, with the face mask, uh, it's not as malleable for me. So when I put it on, it sits perfectly with the dye mask. So that's just how I pr uh, personally like to use it. And double riser, it makes it functional. So that's how I have it set up for my gun. Big face for the win. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as uh, the stock goes, uh, he Eric does run a two point sling. Um, I've used a lot of one point slings, I've used two point slings, and really a long time ago when I first started airsoft, I did have three point and that never worked. So, as we discussed, <laughs> uh, don't like single point slings. Uh, I run just a hydro carrier because it is going to be uh, this gun is HP tat. Um, I can't really use a sling all that well. So, I found uh, Evic was selling this thing called a universal tactical clip, and I was intrigued because. I seen some guy just sling it on here and it was holding and then you took it off and there was no like fabric no nothing like that so I picked it up and what it does is uh, the universal tactical clip uh, clips in just like this and because you can put it there. yep okay a uh, universal tactical clip just clips on like this you don't have to worry about any straps nothing gonna get in your way um, if you have a bigger face like Eric does it might kind of impede on your nose a little bit and if you're wearing a full face mask it might kind of push up on that uh, I don't find that to be the problem um, so like I said it just clips on like that and then you're gonna be good to go if you're doing like some sort of objective you clip it on you can raise a flag grab a break do a bomb so whatever your game that you're playing at the moment has you do or if you're I mean if you do to a lot of operations and you have to pick up a down person you can just clip it on without having to worry about any fabric so that is my preferred way of uh, clipping the gun away from where I am, especially rifles. If I have a pistol, I'll just have a pistol. Well, the so. really short rifle like that, it works well. Yes. Now, for something like this, it might if you have be a really awkward, long one, it's you probably not want to do it because you're gonna if you're gonna kneel down, it's gonna jab right into that but dirt. But for a mud. pistol carbine, but for or something a super this short, short yeah. if you have a really really small uh, polar star AG or whatever, you know, four inch or seven inch, you'll be fine. You can clip it on there. You can bend down, kneel down. Uh, you can even sit really. And you'll be fine. You can just clip it all the way, and you'll be fine. But if you have something longer, like Eric does, uh, I wouldn't kind of, I wouldn't recommend this too well unless you do put it on your play carrier like this, and then yep. you'll be fine. Um, and then moving over to the stock, uh, Eric is a larger dude. Uh, he needs a little bit more reach. I like to keep my stock collapsed, and that way I can get exactly how I want right onto the gun. Yeah. There, then there's me. I like super nice reach. Yes. Uh, Actually, I want to mention determining your length of pull, because Andre just mentioned a good point here. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be something that you have to keep in mind, is what your preferred length of pull is for your rifle. I've got my stock all the way out, yep. and, and I've got a in. fixed stock on my AK. Uh, so just what you're going to want to do is I recommend holding your rifle one-handed and adjusting your stock until you feel a point where you can keep your rifle comfortably in the pocket of your shoulder and well-supported with your one hand. Uh, that's going to depend on your rifle, it's what point of balance, it's going to depend on your body type. I'm a large man, and I use longer rifles. Exactly. And uh, for me, the longer reach, perfect. Yep. Uh, so just quick little thing right there. So I guess that's uh, kind of our point here is just a couple examples of the way we do things and why we do them, which I think also reflects just a couple of the differences in mindset and needs that we have. Yes. Because 
you know, obviously Andre running more speed soft style. He's not worried about having something that's going to be, you know, retained to his body that he can let hang for long periods of time to a 40 hour Milson West game. No, but I do need the quick access of being able yep. to, like, if I do ever get out to the speed speed events, I need to drop my gun, grab that flag and pick up my gun. I want to be able to do that as quick as I can and not worry about having to get stuck on things and having some sort of fabric in my way. So having this universal tactic clip, like I mentioned, is easier to just drop it, grab the flag, pick it back up and I can continue yep. running. And also just the wet fact that you don't play like a lot of low light or dark no. scenarios and I do yep. and then I like you know having different setups like so th the thing to bear in mind is honestly evaluate what you're putting your gun together for yes. you know, look at what your needs are uh, I know some people will say oh well I want to build my rifle just so it looks cool well yeah. I, mean, a lot of I think this like rifle looks pretty cool but it also just so happens to pretty much totally meet my needs yep. uh, it just it's all going to depend on what you're doing and what your budget is too because yep. you know that's also if a you only play, factor. If you only play locally at your outdoor CQB uh, kind of game and you load yourself up with a flashlight, a pack box, yeah. a vertical grip, uh, God knows whatever else you put yep. on your gun, you're just going to weight yourself down and then you get to get fatigued and then when you ask to get, you know, run a bomb or run some sort of objective, you're going uh, to be really tired. So you got to really evaluate what you put on yep. your guns and make sure that what you put on there works for what you need for that game plan. And then if you go to, you know, some sort of Milsom West game or something uh, more national based, um, you can start evaluating differently for how your setup is going. You can always have two different uppers, you know, you have the same length rail, whatever, whatever. Also a very good And point. you can put, you know, your four inch rail system with just a red dot and a vertical grip, stick that guy on there, go to your local indoor field or outdoor field, wherever you play, and you have it set up exactly how you want it. And then if you go to like a, a national game, you have your long, you know, 11 and a half inch rail system, slap that guy on there and you can go out and run and do that as well. So there's another option if you haven't thought about that already. Airsoft guns are pretty modular in yeah. general. I mean, even this AK has a rail system on. I could ditch the light and everything if I wanted to, you know, upper seers on the air, like yep. Andre mentioned, you can do a lot. Uh, so experiment, have fun. Uh, maybe our thoughts on this kind of help to you evaluate what your needs are and the pros and cons. Uh, nothing we say here is gospel, you know, <laughs> as we, as we said. These are just know, personal preference. Yeah, this is personal preference. And I know some people, you know, will discuss with us and some guys will be like, oh, you know, I really agree with that or I really don't agree with that. And that. whatever that discussion is, I hope that uh, it's valuable for you and it helps you have more fun on the airsoft field. And one thing before we go, I want to mention, don't worry about looking completely militaryized. You can always go like this and be completely unique and have something yep. so out of the realm that people are going to ask you, what is that? Because they most yep. likely want it. So don't be too discouraged about grabbing no. something that's, you know, oh, realistic. I've, oh, I've seen some guys, too, who do, like, three-gun style ARs, yes. which is super cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's it, it just depends on what you want out of the game, which is the beauty of Airsoft. Absolutely. So anyways, I'm E-House. I'm Andre. Peace. See you later, guys.